In this video, we're going to study the integral of 2x from 1 up to the integral of 2x from 1 up to the integral of 2x from 1 up to and so on and so forth. What is the value of this nested or iterated integral? Now, the problem is already posed in kind of an interesting way, but it's actually the solution that I find has really interesting dynamics that I want to share with you in this video. The first thing we should probably talk about is what exactly do I mean by this tower of integrals? Well, let me begin by defining the function f of t, which is the integral from 1 up to t of 2x dx. And the idea here is that this object is just a function. For any value of t, we get a definite integral and you get some output. In, in fact, this integral is an easy one to do. We can integrate it directly and just get t squared minus 1. So we actually have a little bit of mathematical clickbait going on here that it's structured as an integral doesn't really matter. It's just some function t squared minus 1. Now, there's multiple ways to interpret that tower of integrals, but the way I'm going to do it is with a sequence. I'm going to imagine I start at some value of t. So I'll have a first term of my sequence, an, an a naught or an a0, just equal to t. It's where I start. Could be anything. Then the next term in my sequence, a1 of t, is you do one integral or you apply the function once. So wherever you start, now you're at t squared minus 1. Then for a2, you do that again. You take the function of the function of t, which in, in this case would be t squared minus 1 all squared minus 1. And this would be just like taking the integral from 1 up to the integral from 1 up to t with the two different integrands. And you can carry on in this way. You can do an a3 and an a4. And in general, you could imagine having an a n, which was just n different iterations of that function. You did a composition n times. This just looks like a tower of integrals where there's n different integral signs and the top one's going to have a t and each one is going to be raised to the power of the previous term in the sequence. So now that I have a sequence, I can pose the question, what is the limit of that sequence? What's the limit as n goes to infinity of the a n? And notice, this might not be one thing because it depends on where I start. It depends on the a naught equal to t. If you give me a different value of t, well, this sequence may or may not converge, or it might converge to different values, so what on earth is going on? Now, when I started to unpack this and think what different values of t are going to give convergent values, the, the first thing that stuck out was what we call fixed points. So that is, imagine you have a spot where f of t is just equal to t. If that was the case, the sequence would definitely converge. You, you apply f once, twice, three, n times, you just always stay at the value of t, the limit would be t. So a fixed point, if there are any, is very nice. And in our specific case, because we're asking the question, is t squared minus 1 equal to t? That's just a quadratic. So we can solve for the fixed points. Solve the quadratic, you get two different roots. You get 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And the positive root of this, 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2, that might set off an alarm bell in your mind. That is the golden ratio going by phi or phi. And then the negative root with just a bit of algebra, you can do it down in the comments if you wish, is just negative one over the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is used throughout mathematics. It has so many fascinating applications and it's just kind of cool that it pops up in this scenario. So I've come along here, I've plotted my quadratic and I've plotted my straight line f of t just equal to t. I've got my two intersection spots, there's the golden ratio and over here, negative one over the golden ratio. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to start at some value just a little bit to the right of one of those fixed points. And I've plotted here what I call a cobweb diagram. Now, I've talked about cobweb diagrams before in my previous sort of fixed point iteration video, cosine of cosine of cosine of cosine and so forth. Check out that video, it's actually a lot of fun, but in this video, we're going to use some of those same tools. So, so what is this cobweb diagram doing? The idea is that because the output of one term of the sequence is the input for the next, the output becomes the input, the output becomes the input. A way to alternate the output or the input is going to the line y equal to x where the output and the input are the same. And the way it works is this. I'm going to start over here to the right of my fixed point. I go up and I get the height, which is going to be the output of the first term here, and this is just some height on the graph. Then that height becomes the input of the next term. So the way I do that, my input goes over to the line y equal to x, becomes the input for the next one and goes up to this new height. Then off to the right and up and so forth and so forth. 
And I can keep on zooming out here, and what I see is that this basic behavior is always gonna keep on going. I'm always going up and to the right, up and to the right, and so forth. And so intuitively what I have is if I sort of imagine my starting spot being anywhere off here to the right, then I'm always gonna have this behavior that it diverges, it keeps on going to the right. If it stayed at the fixed point, it'd be fixed, but if it's to the right of the fixed point, it's gonna diverge to infinity. To make this a bit more precise, I'll notice that we have this nice condition, which is that a given fixed point is unstable, which means points nearby leave that fixed point if the magnitude of the derivative is bigger than one. And basically the idea here is that the straight line, f of x equal to x, that that has derivative one. And if you have anything where the derivative has a, a magnitude greater than one, then you're going to get that cobweb diagram that takes it away, that transitions it away from the fixed point. And in particular, we can extend this argument to say that if you have any value of t, any initial starting spot, which has a magnitude greater than the golden ratio, then it's gonna be diverging to infinity. It's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger by the same argument we're seeing here with the slopes. Okay, so we've seen that these points with magnitude more than the golden ratio are gonna diverge to infinity. But let me just play what happens as I move my points to the right, but inside with smaller magnitudes than the golden ratio. And as you can see here, there's a lot of really interesting and kind of crazy dynamics that are going on. So this is really what we want to try to unpack. Let me choose one very special value. I'm gonna start at the value of a equal to zero. And notice what happens, I get this really nice interesting square. Basically the idea is, my function is right, t squared minus one. Okay, so you start at zero, you go to minus one. Then minus one squared minus one is zero, you get back to zero. Then you go to minus one, then back to zero, then to minus one, then back to zero. You go back and forth forever. A sequence that alternates back and forth between minus one and zero is not convergence, it's a type of divergence. But it's an interesting sequence and it's gonna be an important one for us. And then I notice if I start somewhere, like just over here for example, then points like this, it, it might make it look like it's going towards that fixed point. But if I zoom in at what exactly is going on, it doesn't hit the fixed point and it actually spirals out and leaves the fixed point. Kind of makes sense. We thought that fixed point was unstable, right? But notice what's happening. As it gets bigger, it gets closer to that square, the minus one, zero, one. So for example, the spot that starts directly at one goes one to zero, and then it's back down at that square that goes zero, minus one, zero, minus one forever. And so if I play that animation one more time, what we're seeing is that there's a lot of these spots where it looks like it's going to that minus one to zero square. And there's other spots where it looks like it somehow keeps on connecting back down here at that fixed point. So why is that the case? Why is it that for some values, let me see if I can find one that looks pretty good here. Like this one here at point six, it doesn't exactly seem to come down and hit the fixed point. Indeed, we see the spiraling away. It's getting close. And if I kept on drawing more of these segments here, it would eventually blow up to that minus one zero squares we've seen. But if it's getting close, is it possible that there's some points where it gets exactly there? Indeed, there is. Now, recall we had these two fixed points, the golden ratio and negative one over the golden ratio. However, there is also a notion of something that eventually becomes fixed. Perhaps it's not fixed when you apply f once, but if you apply f twice or three times or n times, then you end up at one of those fixed points. For example, we had the property that f of phi, which is always phi squared minus one, is just equal to phi. That was our definition. The solution to that quadratic was our, our definition of this particular number. However, because of the square there, it actually also works if you put in a negative. So if you started at negative phi, you then apply f, and you're at positive phi, you apply f again, and you're at the same value over and over and over again. So negative phi is not a fixed point, but it is eventually a fixed point, in the sense that you apply f once, and now you are at the fixed point. Similarly for the other one, we saw that negative one over phi was a fixed point, but plug in the same thing without the negative sign, it also works because of the, the square and the definition of f. So we have these two fixed points, and then the negatives of those two fixed points that are going to be fixed after one application of f. So already we've got four points that are going to converge. Are there gonna be more? Well, yes, in fact, there's gonna be infinitely many that can be constructed in this way. Let's take that one over phi one, the, the new one that we have here. Okay, so I can ask the question, 
for what value of t does t squared minus 1 equal to 1 over phi? Well, well, this is quadratic. I can solve it, and I get this number. So now I've got two new points, where if you apply f, you get to 1 over phi, which isn't a fixed point, but you apply f again, and you get to negative 1 over phi, which was one of our fixed points. So in this manner, you can construct this sort of countably infinite set going back and back and back of new points that are all eventually fixed. So first I'm going to go and plot this point at the value of negative 1 over the golden ratio. But then in addition, I'm going to plot the, the value that has the same output but the negative value for the input. This is just 1 over the golden ratio. And I can keep on doing this. I can keep on adding more points from my sequence. I was like, what's a, what's a point that then goes to that? Or what's a point that then goes to that? Or what's a point that then goes to that? And so I have this series of points where if I start here, I go from one to the other, to the other, to the other with every successive application of my function f, it is eventually a fixed point. I could come back and turn on my cobweb diagram. If I start at that spot, it comes up and you see this behavior where it goes down and well, actually if I zoom in here, it very slightly misses that fixed point. Well, 1.583 is an approximation for this irrational number, for very slightly misses it. And indeed, because the magnitude of the derivative is bigger than one for all these points, remember the derivative is just 2t, so as long as my t is greater than a half, that's going to be satisfied. So for all of these points in my sequence, they're all unstable. And indeed, if you are slightly off, you're going to end up with this spiraling away from the fixed point. If you're exactly right, then you eventually will hit the fixed point. Okay, so let's summarize the different things that we've observed. First of all, we have two points that are genuinely fixed, the golden ratio and negative one over the golden ratio. You apply f, you get exactly the same thing. And so for those initial values, our sequence is convergent. Then, we have all of those infinitely many points, like the negative of the golden ratio and one over the golden ratio, all of those points where they will eventually become fixed points. Then you have all the points that diverge. These are when your starting spot has a magnitude larger than the golden ratio. And then there's all the other points. And for all of those other points, they all collapse back down to that minus one, zero, minus one, zero alternating sequence. So they don't actually converge. This is a divergent sequence but it gets arbitrarily close to this particular sequence. So we have these four different category of points, and that's what led to this kind of crazy and beautiful picture, the solution to this nested integral problem. Now, if you've been noticing the shirt that I've been wearing, I'm very pleased to announce this is the first video I've managed to do this in. I have a merch line of math merchandise. So you can go and check out beautifulequations.net to check out the merch and maybe get some and support the channel. I always very much appreciate that. Give the video a like for the YouTube algorithm and we'll do some more math in the next video.